Hi and welcome to the channel. Today we will build another SFF PC using this D26 case. I bought this for 1,911 Philippine pesos or around 33 US dollars, which is pretty cheap in my opinion. The quality however is similar to D19 and D21. I should say budget friendly quality as well. As for the specs, this can only fit a flex PSU, 50mm cooler, and a 258mm 2.5 slot GPU. Overall volume is estimated to be at 7.1 liters. The layout is a typical sandwich style case. It has a cutout for the motherboard on the left and cutout for the GPU on the right. You can also see the extension plug at the bottom of the GPU side. As for the front panel, it has a power switch, USB-C, and USB-A. To open the case, you need to unscrew four screws from the side panel at the motherboard side and another four screws from the side panel at the GPU side. Upon opening the GPU side, it is clearer on what is inside. First is this outstanding extension cable as it doesn't have the usual insulation. Moving on, it has a power switch and USB 3 which is split into USB-C and USB-A front panel connectors. It has a handle which I always appreciate and lastly a bunch of zip ties and screws. Looking at the top panel, the two holes near the front are for the handle and the four holes here are for a 120 millimeter slim fan moving on with the build after removing the side panels i also removed the top panel which is secured by four screws i also removed the psu bracket screws which has two screws near the top and two screws underneath i then started to install the handle to the top panel and then install the slim fan to the top panel as well set aside the top panel for now as for the components i'll be using the usual b550 i aorus pro ax as the motherboard the processor is a ryzen 7 5800x RAM is a Kingston Fury and RGB 32GB 3200MHz CL16 RAM. And as for the cooler, I use the Alpen von Blackridge cooler in compatibility mode. Though compatibility mode is ironically not fully compatible with this motherboard. For the cooler to be compatible, I removed the heatsink for the storage and you'd see my SSD there. As for the PSU, I'll be using the FSP Flex Guru Pro 500 watts gold power supply. It has been a while since I used this. Anyway for me, it is best to plug the CPU power connector first to the motherboard and while trying to align the screw holes of the motherboard to the case, I noticed that the holes don't align to the standoffs. If you can notice here, the motherboard standoff can be adjusted slightly towards the front of the case. I then proceed to adjust all motherboard standoffs. The reason why the case manufacturer did this is unknown to me. But after adjusting, the motherboard is now aligned properly. Use the typical motherboard screw which has a crown and screw the motherboard to the case. To install the power supply, align the screw holes to the case as well. The PSU screw here is the fatter silver screw among the bunch. Screw the PSU to the case and your non-dominant hand may need to support the PSU to secure it properly as it is against gravity. And then plug the sketchy power extension cable to the PSU. Plug the power switch cable front header to the motherboard. Plug the USB 3 cable front header to the motherboard. And plug the 24-pin power cable to the motherboard. As for the PSU bracket, I installed it under the 24-pin power cable which was a small mistake. The reason is that you will then be unable to close the side panel. I then removed the PSU bracket again to fix the blunder that I made. To make space, I routed the excess cables and PCIe power connector cables to the GPU side of the case. I then positioned the bracket like so. To be honest, this was a bit uncomfortable in my opinion. But anyway, I then screwed the bracket to the case, plugged the PCIe riser to the motherboard, removed the PCIe baffle cover. Moving on with the GPU, for the GPU I'll be using the Sapphire Pulse RX 7600. This is the biggest, hottest GPU that I have that can fit in this case. For GPUs, I usually plug it to the riser first and then screw the riser to the case. But like the motherboard standoff, this one doesn't align as well. I then unscrew the riser from the case and proceed to screw the GPU baffle to the case instead. Looking at this, it seems that I have to adjust the standoffs for the GPU as well. Anyway, I plug the PCIe power connector to the GPU first. Unplug the PCIe riser from the motherboard and unscrew the motherboard from the case. At this stage, it would be a real pain to dismantle everything just for this. So I let the motherboard stand on the side first with all the cables connected. I aligned the riser screw holes and then screwed the riser to the case. Screw back the motherboard to the case. Plug the PCIe riser to the motherboard. Screw the GPU baffle to the case. Plug the fan to the fan header. Screw the top panel to the case. Lastly, screw the side panels. And it's time to test this. As for testing, there are only two configs. One is without fan at the top and the other with the fan at the top. As for the temps while benchmarking Cinebench R23 for 30 minutes, the CPU temps hovered at 90 degrees Celsius for all configurations which is expected. However, without a top fan, the GPU fan would sometimes
didn't spin as the system heats up the GPU as well. With a top fan, the GPU fan didn't spin at all. As for the temps while benchmarking FA15 in 4K for 30 minutes, the CPU temps without top fans averaged at 65.68 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 77.5 degrees Celsius. With a top fan, it averaged at 60.09 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 72.1 degrees Celsius. As for the GPU temps, without top fans it averaged at 74.19 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 76 degrees Celsius. With a top fan, it averaged at 71.44 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 72 degrees Celsius. As for the GPU hotspot temps, it averaged at 89 and 90.3 degrees Celsius with and without top fans respectively. As for fan speeds, it averaged at 46 and 50% with and without top fans respectively. As for the temps while benchmarking FA15 in 1080p for 30 minutes, for the CPU temps without top fans it averaged at 74.36 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 83 degrees Celsius. With a top fan, it averaged at 67.03 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 75.4 degrees Celsius. As for the GPU temps, without top fans it averaged at 74.26 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 76 degrees Celsius. With a top fan, it averaged at 71.04 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 72 degrees Celsius. As for the GPU hotspot temps, it averaged at 88.88 and 90.44 degrees Celsius with and without top fans respectively. As for the fan speeds, it averaged at 46 and 50% with and without top fans respectively. As a short recap on temps, of course it is recommended to install an exhaust case fan at the top. Based on this simple testing, it can reduce both CPU and GPU temps drastically. As for the dislikes to the case, first would be the lack of manual. It was an easy build if they had a manual. For this type of case, usually I just need 45 minutes to shoot. This took around 1 hour and 15 minutes. The motherboard installation took a good 10 minutes as I didn't know that I need to adjust the motherboard screw. The GPU installation took a good extra 20 minutes as well. I tried hard to adjust the standoff while not being able to see it completely and it just clicked to me that maybe I could let the motherboard stand somewhere. It was a real struggle. Next would be the noise. The overall build was really loud. Next is the power extension cable. I just don't like that it has virtually no insulation. It is thinner than most electric fan wires. Lastly is that this case is pretty much brandless and probably zero accountability from the manufacturers. If the extension cable catches fire, you have nowhere to run but to your own private insurance coverage. It also means that layout and compatibility can change without prior notice. It already happened in D21 Pro and it could happen again. And to add, I compared the listing in Lazada and AliExpress and they have different specs in terms of overall size and CPU cooler. Based on testing, AliExpress listing seems to be correct in terms of CPU cooler height and with that, possibly the dimensions as well. Also, if you look closely at the pictures, you'd notice that there is a 3.5mm audio jack which is not existent in my case. And my case has a USB-C which is non-existent in the pictures. As for the likes, I like its cooling performance. Though do note that I only tested an RX 7600. I also like the quote-unquote innovative layout. Usually, you wouldn't mount a flex PSU this way. But for me, this is unique. With this config, they managed to fit a longer GPU compared to the D21 Pro. And also a smaller overall volume as well. While the PC cooler i100 Pro mesh has a even longer GPU compatibility for just 0.4 liter volume increase, it lacks case fan support which makes it horrible in terms of temps against every ITX case out there. As for my tip to build in this case, I think it is best to install the GPU right after removing all the side and top panels. This means that you need to plug the GPU to the riser, screw the GPU baffle to the case, align the PCIe riser standoffs, and screw the riser to the case. Installing the GPU first would give you the headroom to adjust the standoffs, which could have been covered by the motherboard. Also, this will not block the motherboard standoff adjustment which will be needed as well. This is contrary to the usual builds where the motherboard is installed first. If you wonder why securing the riser is important, based on experience, it is possible to have some signal degradation if your GPU is not well seated to the riser. PCIe signal degradation could cause around 15 to 50 percent FPS performance loss. Or sometimes it just won't boot. Simple as that. Overall, I'm half okay and half not okay on this case. Okay because it is cheap and the temp performance is not bad. Not okay because of the power extension cable. I think it is a risk but I'm not an electrical engineer so I'm just basing this on the cables available at home. For me, just a 75 watt electric fan having thicker cables than a potentially 650 watt computer raises an eyebrow. Of course it could be within spec but something 
that I won't be able to test. Anyway, that's it for this video. Do let me know in the comments below on what you think. Thanks for watching. Do like or dislike. And subscribe for more unboxing, SFF builds, and benchmarks. Bye!